Building strategic depth, it helps you for sure. It also makes your business more profitable, more valuable, more durable, more scalable. That moment, October in 2000, changed everything 24 years ago. Not owner independent, at least more owner independent. Maui Mastermind presents the Business Coach Podcast, answering your questions and providing real actionable insights for building a better, stronger, more profitable business without sacrificing your time, life, or freedom anymore. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Business Coach Podcast. I'm your host, David Finkel, and in this episode, I'm going to be focusing on how can you build an owner independent business. And I want to start off by asking you a very important question. And the question is, have you built a business or is it really that you built more of a self-employed job for yourself? And the two are really important the distinction between the two. And I'm going to start off by sharing a story. And I want to share with you the story of Shirley. Shirley was a business coaching client for years, close to eight or nine years of ours. She's still a client today. And she and her husband, Keith, had met while they were in the military. Shirley was formerly in the Navy. Keith was a Marine pilot. And they had built, at the time he met them, Montessori schools, two fairly large Montessori schools, uh, 150-ish kids per school at that point in time, roughly 100, 125, 150. And when we met Shirley, she was working a lot. <laughs> she was working probably 75 to 80 hours of what I'll call admitted work. Admitted work is work that she would admit to. She would say, hey, I'm working 75, 80 hours a week. And then you would ask, well, Shirley, tell me about the work that you do at night at home or on the weekends when you come into the schools when you shouldn't be in the schools. And we figured it. she was working over 100 hours per week, literally seven days a week. The schools were running her life. She, she's a mom. She and Keith have kids of their own, daughters of their own, but they were spending more attention or he, she. She was spending more attention on school and other people's kids because of the sense of a really strong responsibility she felt about that. That was where she started. Now, if you can imagine, the two schools maxed her out. The hardest part wasn't getting teachers to teach well or watch the kids well. It was managing mostly the staff issues and the parent issues. Her comment was, David, if it wasn't for staff and parents, running a, a school would be easy. A Montessori school for preschool would be easy. And her schools were really beautiful. If you, if she took us and a group of uh, other coaching clients on a tour one time. She had, had a celebration dinner there. Um, this is about six years or five years into the program. And she proudly showed off what she had done in the schools. And it was amazing what she had built there. And the schools were beautiful. I, I've got kids. At the time, my kids were in Montessori schools two states away. I was, I was tempted to move to California and put my kids in her schools. I mean, they were that pristine and immaculate. So she ran them really well, but they ran around her. Now, I want to fast forward to about two years ago. This would be about seven years after she started this work. At that point, she had grown her, her schools. She had generated, what, about another million and a half of revenue in that period of time. She had opened up the third school in that time and the schools ran where she was still working quite a bit, but she wasn't working 100 hours a week. She was working 65, 70 hours a week, which for her was a massive reduction. And she was taking regular vacations, which she wasn't doing prior to that part. She had made the business more enjoyable for her. But more importantly than just that, the business now had a life beyond just her, which is what allowed her to scale to the third location, which is what allowed her about a year and a half ago to sell the schools um, successfully. And she's in the process of actually, after having taken a little bit of time off, a year or so, she started up another school. It's something she wants to do and build again. She's really passionate about this part. And so I want to ask you to make a decision here in your part. When you think about running your business, are you someone who's going to build your business off of the traditional way of personally producing more, or are you going to build the business such that it has a life independent of yours. And, and this really is the decision for you to make, the traditional way of building a business, which is very heavily reliant on the owner. I know this. This is the world that I've lived in. I started off being that owner-reliant business owner. The first successful company I built, I'll share the story later in, in, in this episode with you, um, even share with you the moment. I, I actually have the day that it all changed. I know the exact date in October in 2000. Uh, 24 years ago, essentially, um, where everything changed. And I'm going to share that with you. 
but I've also had the privilege to work with thousands of business owners over the last 25 years. And I see that nine out of 10, 94, 95 out of 100, build their business to rely on them, to build the business around them. And only that one out of 10 or that one out of 20 build the business so it has a life independent of them and the owner. We call that the level three roadmap. Let's, let's touch base on this here. So the traditional way of building a business, to be clear, is you build it in a sense that you want to stay in control. Um, it's too uncomfortable with you thinking about you know, giving control to other people. And so what happens with that is you want to make sure that you personally stay in charge, that you personally produce more, that you work harder. If you want to grow, you put in more hours. You want the business to expand, you put in that extra energy. It works, but it works only because you're there to do that. The three pitfalls, even if you can be successful that way, and by the way, many business owners are financially successful doing that, maybe not lifestyle successful, but it still brings three pitfalls with that. The first is it leads to a point where you're going to have a cap on your income and your business success. There's a point at which you simply can't run any faster. The second thing it's going to do for you is it's going to put everybody at risk. You know, most businesses are one heart attack, one serious case of burnout, um, one car accident away from the business closing. You know, we look with the clients and we started with them and we do a, an audit of their business. And what I'll share with you, again, this is 25 years of coaching business owners. The average business owner is 60 to 90 days away from being out of business if they were suddenly pulled away from the business. Think about how it puts everyone at risk. It puts your employees at risk, all their families at risk, your family at risk, your customers, your suppliers, your vendors, everyone's at risk. That's one of the other challenges or pitfalls of the traditional way to build a business. The third pitfall is that the more successful you become, the more trapped in the business you become. And this is so common that it even has a name. We call this the small business owner trap. And here's the way it works. Here you are growing a business. And you want to make that business work. And so you put some energy in there. You make that business work. You want that business to grow, you work a little bit harder. Again, but all the key decisions come back to you. All the key work is either done by you or touched in some fashion or checked in in some way by you. And that business revolves around you. And the more you do that, the more you make the business based on your personal production, the more you become trapped having built this wall that holds you in the business. We have a name for that. We call that the small business trap. And it, it is so common, it is a cliche. It's a cliche. And most people think that the way out of that trap is to work harder. But the harder I work, the more I build that wall where that business becomes more and more dependent on me. It becomes more dependent on my production, on my decision making. It becomes almost addicted on my presence that it can't succeed independently of me. So what's the way out? The way out is not to work harder. Working harder is what got you in that trap. It worked, but it worked in a really um, limited way. And there's a point at which it can't grow beyond. So what's the level three way of doing this? And I'm going to come back and I'll talk about what do I mean by level one, level two, level three. But the level three roadmap says, let's build a business, not a job. We're not going to put ourselves at the center of this business. We're going to do it different than that. We're going to put the business at the center and say, how can we build out the processes, the procedures, the systems that we need to run well? How do we build out the internal business controls so that when I'm not there as the owner watching it, the business can still be protected, that the right things are being done at the right time to the right quality standard? How do I make sure that we have established um, a culture that says this is what we're going to be doing? Hugely important. Hugely important. Now, what causes people to be caught in that small business trap? Three things. Three things. First, ignorance. Ignorance. The average business owner doesn't even know that it's possible to build a business independent of themselves. And I'll just let me share a quick story about this. Yesterday, as I record this episode of the Business Coach Podcast, Yesterday, I had lunch with a really cool client of mine. His name's Jeff. Jeff, if you ever met him, he's a delightful man, you know, a serious tennis player, passionate about life, just a good salt of the earth kind of guy. 
So we had lunch locally here where I live in Jackson, Wyoming, and because he was in town, and we had a great lunch. But one of the things he shared with me is about how he had started his painting business roughly 30 years prior. Um, he had been doing painting for over 30 years, if you can imagine this. And as he shared the story, what became evident is Jeff was just like every other business owner out there. He didn't even know that it was possible to build a business independent of him. His thought was, hey, I built a successful painting business. It works. It supported my family well. It's profitable. It supports our employees. It's good for the community. But he was working exceptionally hard, making sure that the quality in the field was the right way, making sure that the supervisors were doing the right things. He was, again, that business was wrapped around him. Two years ago, his son, Cooper, um, found our book scale, a book I'd written with my friend Jeff Hoffman. Um, I think we wrote it almost 10 years ago, the first, I don't know if he had the first edition or if he had the most recent edition that came out what, about a year ago. I don't know which. Well, actually, I do know which. If it was two years ago he found the book, it must have been the first edition. So he found the first edition, which is a very good book about scaling a company. And it was like a light bulb went off. He went and ran over to his dad, Jeff, and said, hey, dad, we should be doing this. The two of them went through that book together, and that was the start. A few months later, they came to their first event for the Maui community. Um, they got started with a coaching program, but here's the point. Before they had ever heard someone shared with them that it was not just possible, but it was better to build a business independent of them, ignorance is what stops most business owners. They don't even know that an owner-independent business is possible. You know, one out of 10, one out of 20 business owners even know that that's really a truly achievable thing. The second thing that traps business owners in that small business track is controlitis, <laughs> the inflammation of their control gland. And I, you know, I'll speak for myself. Um, I am somebody who, without question, has a serious case of controlitis. That's something I've struggled with now for 28 years since I first started building businesses, 29 years now. Wow. Um, and what it did is it trapped me in the businesses that I built. The very first successful company I built, and I'll share the story in just a moment, we were two and a half years, almost three years into the business. At that point, I was traveling half the month, 10 days, 15 days per month, doing workshops and leading conferences and doing front end speaking to generate people for the coaching business. I was working 65, 70 hours a week, some weeks even 80 hours. I was taking vacation, but vacation was a bit scattered and I worked while I was on vacation, let's be honest about that. Um, at that point, Starting into the third year in the business, I was earning probably $150,000 a year, which wasn't bad for someone in his 20s. But my life was that business. And that business's life was fully reliant on me and my business partner, Peter's personal production in the business, without question. Controlitis in there, controlitis. It's only been by releasing some of that control and saying, I value the business's long-term success. I value being able to create more uh, impact in the world. I value having a life more than me controlling every aspect of the business. And how do we start to move away from that? I'll come back to that in a moment. But controlitis, by far, the second thing that traps people. And the third is the lack of a roadmap. The lack of a roadmap. And I want to explain this for a moment. So there are three levels of building a business. And I want to come in and I'm going to draw this out for you to, to really think about this. When you, when you think about building a business, businesses go through predictable stages of growth. And that's good because we know what needs to be done at each business stage and level along the way. So the very bottom end of this business spectrum is what we'll call a level one business. Now a level one business is that startup. It's in the raising of capital that it needs. It's in the planning of getting the business launched. That goes into level two. At level two, the business is in motion. It works in some fashion. It's out there selling actively its product or its services with what it's doing. Now we break level two into early, middle, and advanced stage level two. Now tip for our company, you know, for years we focused in on, and in this podcast, the Business Coach Podcast, we focus on middle stage to advanced stage level two businesses and how can we help them grow to become a level three business. At level two early stage, you're just starting. You haven't even reached the point of profitability. Sometimes it takes a company a few months, sometimes a few years to get past that hurdle and become profitable. When you now have a profitable business, 
your middle stage level two. It's an owner reliant company, the prototypical company. It all works, but it works because you're there in the middle making it work. As you start to build your leadership team and build some of your processes and your systems and some of the internal controls that you need to have a life beyond just you, now you're at that advanced stage level two business. And when you have a real executive leadership team and the business has a life independent of you, you're now that level three business and you have a choice. You can sell the company, you can continue to scale and grow the business, or you can own the business passively or semi-passively, depending what you want to do, depending what you want to do. So coming back into this model here, at each stage along the way, there, we know that there are certain milestones that you need to reach. We know that there are certain systems that you need to have. We know that there are internal controls that you need and certain key team members that you need with that at every stage and level along the way. And what this means is, is that you can predict what's going to happen, which means that it's not chance. That when you learn to grow and scale a company, you can do that again and again and again and again. And if I'm, if I'm seeing a bit excited about this, this is not something I take for granted. This is something I take very personally. Um, my family was a family of small, self-employed people. My grandfather, um, I used to go visit him when I was five, six years old back in Chicago where he lived. And he had a, a drugstore. He was a pharmacist. And I remember going there on these trips to visit with my grandfather. And it was incredibly fun to be there. But I never thought about how my grandfather, we only saw him at night or we saw him if we went into the pharmacy and worked. Um, which was fun at you know, five, six, seven years old, stacking you know, soda pop in the back freezers from behind. That was fun stuff to do. You know, looking at all the comic books they had on the shelves and being able to pull off what I wanted. As long as I didn't bend the covers, he let me take comic books and replace them the next day. I loved it. But looking back, I realized he wasn't able to take the time off. We might be out there for two, three, four weeks visiting with our grandparents in the summer. He worked every single day. He might take one day off or two days during our visit to go do something, but effectively he works seven days a week, 12, 14, 16 hours a day. And what I learned as I got older is that he did that over the course of 50 plus years of his working life. When he finally retired in his mid to late 60s, he had started working as an employee when he was 15 because his family needed the income. This was before the depression. For his family, they had the depression before then. Um, but he just learned that work ethic. And it never occurred to me at the time, but in retrospect, looking back, I realized that I had um, imbibed the same kind of culture. You know, I started off, I wasn't a business person, I was an athlete. And I worked exceptionally hard playing on the US national field hockey team. I was a captain of that team for a number of years. I'm training to play in the Olympics when I got injured. I had no background in business whatsoever. I started my first successful business with a business partner, Peter. And it was a a real estate training company. Peter knew about real estate back then. I can smile and laugh. His background or experience at that point for both of us was very small for him. He had done probably 50 or 60 real estate um, deals or units by that point. Um, but it was enough to get us started. And so we started this real estate training company. Initially, it was him doing all the real estate training and I was doing kind of the things behind the scenes, the marketing and the sales. But as the business grew and worked, I learned how to invest in real estate and I got really good at buying single family houses on lease options or subject to the existing financing or other types of creative financing or even conventional financing. And over time we did this more and more. And as that business grew, it grew because Peter and I both worked really hard. And you know, we were putting in 65, 70, 80 hours a week. We were on the road traveling three, um, weeks out of the month between the two of us, four weeks out of the month between the two of us, where sometimes it would be him, sometimes it would be me, sometimes it would be both of us. And I remember it was October of 2000, and he and I sat down in a meeting at Estes Park, Colorado to plan out our business. You see those yellow sheets of paper in front of us? On one of those sheets of paper, we wrote down, let's build this business so we can sell it. And then every year we'll make the decision, do we like it enough to want to, to keep buying it ourselves? We also put something else here. You see it said, what if wealth is about units of time? How long can we leave the business and have it be worth the same or more? You know, it never occurred to me prior to that, that one of the ways to discuss if a business was successful was can you leave it and have it be 
not just survive, but actually thrive, grow, be better, more valuable when you come back? How long can you leave it? At that time when we first wrote that sheet of paper down, we could leave the business for you know, uh, probably two weeks. But if both of us were gone for more than two weeks, the business would start to go downhill. And within a month or two, the business would have crumbled. It, it would have failed. That's how owner-reliant we had built this business. Again, by that point, we were both financially successful. You know, I was in my 20s earning $150,000, $200,000, dollars a year at that point. But when we made that decision, we said, within the next year and a half, 18 months, we want to build this business such that it is more independent of us. We made specific criteria about that. And we accomplished it. You know, we, we doubled the business in the next year. And then we tripled the business in the next two years after that. That business that was earning hundreds of thousands of dollars of profit went on to earn millions of dollars of profit while I was in my early 30s. And that business was, at the point in our scale here, was just on the verge of advanced stage level two entering level three when I sold it, uh, my half of it anyways. That moment, October in 2000, changed everything 24 years ago. Since that point, as I built other businesses, I built them with the eye of how do I make them independent? I take the Maui companies, our business coaching practice. You know, I don't want to scale, I don't want to, I don't want to sell the company. I'm kind of a combination between continuing to grow it and working passively in the business. I, I want to work in it, but I don't want to work more than 40 hours a week, and I want to work roughly half a year. It's essentially what I do now. So let me ask you this question or make a suggestion for you. I'm challenging you to make it a stated goal of your business, to make this business independent of you, the owner. Make that a stated goal, that how do we build this company so it's independent of me, my personal production, my leadership in the business. Now, you might decide, like I do, to stay in the business, but make the company strong enough that it could be independent of you. Now, when that, I bring that up, I know, because I've, I've talked with thousands of business owners over the years, the first thing that jumps to your mind when I say that is, oh no, David, what will my team think? You know, my team is going to be upset if I tell them I want to make this business independent of me. You know, they're going to think that I'm going to go off into the beach and just relax in Hawaii and they're going to do all the work and they're going to be upset with me and angry with me and all kinds of stuff goes on. And what I would tell you is just like any client that I coach, done well, explained well, it's in their best interest and they will support this move. Um, an owner-independent business, or a business we'll call it with strategic depth. Now, you and I will talk about owner-independence with your staff. You're not going to call it owner-independence so much as you're going to call it strategic depth. So just get used to that word, over on that word, that term, strategic depth. Strategic depth means a business that is strong enough and stable enough to be more than just any one person, yourself included. Now, you and I, you know, in this podcast, we're going to talk about an owner-independent business. But with your staff, we're going to use the languaging of strategic depth. They both functionally do the same thing. They both functionally do the same thing, but it makes it a little bit more palatable for your team. So what it, think about it. If you have an owner-reliant company, if you have no strategic depth and you get hurt, everyone, everyone is at risk. Back with Peter and I, if he or I both got hurt, the company would have failed. 30, 60, 90 days later, would have failed, would have been worthless. Everyone would have lost their sources of, of, of income. Our clients would have lost the, the help that we were able to generate, the value we generated for them. Our vendors would have been out. All the families, it would have touched thousands and thousands of people directly and indirectly with that. But an owner, independent company that gets to level three, a business that has strategic depth, it allows your team to have more autonomy. When you build the business beyond you, it gives autonomy to your team. The ability for them to make decisions, to be more in charge of their own aspect of the area of the business they run. Number two, it gives them more security. Right? It protects them, not just from the loss of you, but let's say your number two in the business, Sally, is incredibly important and something happens to her, but there's no backup for her, no systems, no team that's been cross-trained, no internal controls that helps those jobs get done. Everyone is now screwed. It causes stress, pressure. It's horrible. Now, I'll share a quick story about that. We work with a guy, Blake, who has a, an IT business. And I remember when we first started working with him, he had a number two in the company that two and a half years later, he left the company to go to a competitor. And, you know, it was too bad. He moved out to California to do this. 
from Colorado. Blake said to me, he said, look, David, I hadn't done this work with our whole staff in the prior two and a half years. When this guy left, we would have been screwed. We, we would have been up the creek without a paddle. But it was stressful. It took us about a week to, to reassign roles and cover the responsibilities. But it was a week of stress, and then the whole business went on. And, and, and not just survived, but thrived afterwards. We never would have been able to do that if we hadn't done this work prior to that part. The third thing that an, a, a strategic depth or an owner independent gives to your staff is a chance to grow. And number four, the chance to give more impact, to have a bigger impact on the business. So the first thing when I bring up this idea of an owner independent company is, you know, people say, oh no, David, what, what's my staff gonna think? The second thing that comes up is, um, is start, people start having doubts. And they start saying, is this really possible for me as a business person? Can I build a company that's independent of me? And here's what happens. People start saying, well, David, I see how, um, I see how that, that IT can, business owner could do that, but not me in construction. The IT business owner says, I see how that doctor could do it in her medical practice, but not me in IT services. That doctor says, I see how that manufacturer could do that in his company, but I don't see how I can do it in a medical business. And that manufacturer says, well, I see how someone in construction can do it, but I'm in a high-tech manufacturing business. How do I do it? The irony is, is that businesses across industries have done this before. I want to share a picture. It's one of my favorite pictures. This is a, a couple years out of date. Um, I don't have the most current version, but this is a picture of our clients who won, we call it the Freedom Award. And you see here all these different business owners here that have won the Freedom Award. They've made their business markedly more owner independent in the prior 12 months. And we have people in here in construction. We have people in this picture who are in retail. We have people in this picture who have manufacturing businesses, who have wholesale businesses, who have medical practices, who have professional service firms, who have blue collar service businesses, who have white collar service businesses, who have lifestyle companies. We have all these different people that are in that photo and all of them have made their business more owner independent in the prior 12 months. Any business in any industry can do that, any. But I understand the fear people have after they think about their staff is, well, is this really possible for me? And I, you know, I, I say to them, I tell them, I say, well, you know, if I were your business coach, let me just ask you a question. You might not see how to make the business independent of you. But can you see how to make the business less reliant on you? Maybe, maybe from where you are, if you're somewhere here on the spectrum, middle or advanced stage, maybe level three seems too far away. But if you're middle stage level two, can you see how you can make it advanced stage level two? Or if you're advanced stage level two, can you see how you could perhaps make it um, right there on that transition point toward level three? So maybe you can just get yourself one step further ahead. Maybe you can't go all the way. But each step and stage on that roadmap along, your business is better, your business is more scalable, more durable, more sustainable, more profitable, and best of all, in my opinion anyway, it's more enjoyable for you to own. It's more enjoyable for you as a business person to own. And I wanna share two examples, two stories, about how people in very different business areas were able to do this. The first story I wanna share with you is about a client of ours, her name is Tammy. So Tammy and her husband, Mark, owned uh, a flooring business, a flooring business. And I remember this very clearly because this is a year that she won two awards at her annual awards banquet. The first award she won was for growth of 600% since starting uh, in the coaching program, 600% growth, six extra business. That was really cool. But the second award was even more important about owner independence, that freedom award. And as she came up there, because she had had such extraordinary growth, we asked her to share her story. And she paused. And she started tearing up as she shared the story. She said, David, you don't even know this. But this past year, my dad has had major health challenges. Um, you know, I've been in the program doing this work in my company now for about three years. If I hadn't done this work, I would have had to have made the decision of either not being there to take care of my dad's medical needs or I would have had to close the business because I couldn't have done both. But because of the last three years of doing this work to build this strategic depth, 
I was able to both go there to be there for my dad and still have the business both. I mean, we were bawling. The whole audience was bawling as she shared this. So even in a, in a blue collar business like flooring, this is doable, this is possible. And I'll give one more example. This is Paul Robinson. Paul has a, an IT services business that does high end IT. When I first met Paul, he was at an event of ours back in 2012, a long time ago. And I remember talking with him. He was quiet, very thoughtful, incredibly articulate as we spoke. And at one of the breaks, I said, Paul, share with me about your business. And he shared that in his business at that time, it was him plus two contractors, and they would help um, small and mid-sized businesses move from one location to another and re relocate their IT in San Diego. Um, he did this for venture-funded startups and some other parts with that. And the business worked. You know, he made a couple hundred thousand dollars a year doing this. But it wasn't a business. It was a self-employed operation that ran around him. Yes, he did sub out to two contractors. But without him, the business wasn't there. And he had been doing this for roughly a decade. Fast forward to today, Paul's business is 10, 15 times larger. He is not the limiting factor for that business anymore. He doesn't do any IT services anymore. That's not his role. What used to be his high value task has now been pushed down and there are other people that that's their high value work. This stuff makes a big difference. I'm gonna share one more entry point for this. Um, I'm gonna share a story of my family. So I have three kids, Adam, Joshua, uh, Matthew, and, and, and my wife, Heather. And I remember a couple of years ago, in 2020, so I guess more than a couple years ago, in 2020, um, in getting ready for our Business Success Summit, our big Maui event we do every year, and we've been doing for two decades out in Hawaii, I had created this new tool called the Vacation Catalyst. I'm going to share the concept with you because I think you're going to really appreciate how it comes back to this idea of building an owner-independent business. So when I created this Vacation Catalyst tool, um, the idea behind it was, what if you were to plan somewhere in the future, three years, five years, seven years, this amazing dream vacation, but it had to be for an extended period of time. You know, for the clients at that event, maybe it had to be for one month, three months, 12 months, a long vacation. Where would you go? When would you go? Who would go with you? And then from this frame, we started brainstorming, what would the things be that would, if you had zero contact with your business, what would the things be that would scare you, concern you, that would seem impossible or dangerous to you? And then how, how costly or valuable would that be to solve that or not solve that one to five? And so we did this tool at that event. Now, prior to that event, I, like I do every year, I do the tools myself. Like I actually go through and then I give them to a couple of the participants to do them before we ever get there. So this year I did the tool and what I picked for me was that in two years time, I wanted to take this amazing eight week trip through Italy and the UK with my family. Um, during the summer, because my kids are in school, um, and so I picked that time. So it was in 2020 in November, and I set the deadline so that in 2022, so I guess it was a little bit less than that because it would have been in July and August of 2022, that my family and I were gonna go do this amazing trip through Italy and the UK. And as I listed out the things that would scare me, concern me, I had my, my, my list, I said, okay, I've got effectively 20-ish months to solve these things, to build the systems, the team, the internal controls, to build the strategic depth to handle these things while I'm gone. And the next year, I, I said, let's do a dry run this summer. Um, I'm gonna work 15 days over this three-month stretch, where in the past I would have worked the whole summer, maybe take off you know, two or three or four weeks in the summer, but now I took off you know, essentially two months out of the summer. And some of the things worked really well, some of the things didn't work well, I fixed the things that didn't work well. Then that following year 2022 comes. And my family and I, we took the trip to Europe. Now, we did it different than that. My kids did not want to go away on a trip for seven or eight weeks with their parents. Maybe they wanted to go away with their mom, but not with me for that length of time. So we changed the trip. But I started taking off in 2022, July, probably June, July, and August, those three months. I did that in 2020. Two, I did that last year in 2023, and here going forward, I've continued to do this, this transition we're in. Um, now it's to the point where I'm taking off five and a half months every year. I'm including the full summer. 
But it all started with that vacation catalyst idea. So maybe you might consider doing the same thing. If you were to pick the dream vacation for yourself, pick a time in the future, one year, three years, five years in the future. Make it an extended vacation, at least three or four weeks. If you've got a business partner, make sure it's with you both leaving at the same time. Because to get ready for that vacation and have it go well requires that you make the business independent of you or more independent of you to be able to do that. And we've watched our clients now use this tool and others um, to make their businesses more and more owner independent. And it makes a tremendous difference. So I've got two really important coaching suggestions for you. The first coaching I have for you as your business coach is to make the decision, make building strategic depth an owner independent business, a stated goal of your company. Get the buy-in from your team with that part. Make it a stated goal. By doing that, just like I did back in 2000 when Peter and I sat down at that hotel in Estes Park, Colorado and drew out on those yellow sheets of paper our goal of building an owner independent business. We didn't have the language for it back then, but that was functionally what we had designed. And over the next four years, we got very close to that. It wasn't quite owner independent, but it was radically more owner independent. Back then I was taking three months off a year and the business had scaled from um, well, roughly at the start of that about 800,000 a year in revenue to over seven and ish million in revenue during that time was by making that a stated goal. We've since used that with other businesses that I personally built and with thousands of other coaching clients over the years. Make it a stated goal. The second thing is for you to study the roadmap. Now, I had shared with you um, in this podcast that roadmap, but if you'd like to get a copy of it, I would love to, to make that my treat for you. So I'll put in the program notes for this episode. I'm gonna put a link for you to download a PDF of that roadmap tool that you saw for those of you watching the video-based version of the podcast. If you want to go directly to the link that I've set up for that for you to download it, go to mauimastermind.com forward slash roadmap, mauimastermind.com forward slash roadmap. And I'd be happy to give that tool to you with my compliments. I'm going to ask one thing from you though. I want you to use that tool. I want you to use that tool to make your business more owner independent, to have more strategic depth. And I'm going to go one more. I want you to make the decision that you're going to build an owner independent company. You know, for years we've worked with people at that middle and advanced stage level two businesses, helping them get to level three. It is absolutely doable and possible. I've shared multiple examples from today. So I think it's a really important thing for you. Please take advantage of the roadmap, but, but I am going to ask that you're going to use it to make your business better. Now, building an owner independent business, building strategic depth, it helps you for sure. It also makes your business more profitable, more valuable, more durable, more scalable, but it also helps all those indirect people who depend on your business your employees, their families, your vendors, your suppliers. I think of all the ways that we collectively as business owners can do good in the world through our businesses is probably one of the very most important ways. All right. So thank you for listening to me today. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of The Business Coach. I look forward to seeing you in future episodes um, and please do take advantage and get the roadmap. My gift, enjoy it, no strings attached with that part, except for you're gonna put it into action, you're gonna make the decision to make your business, if not owner independent, at least more owner independent by beginning to build strategic depth into your company. Thank you.